So hello and welcome to the 19th episode of the Spotlight Podcast, the unofficial podcast for Century 21 sales representatives in Canada, where we discuss the hot topics and important news in the real estate industry. So I'm your host, Linus Killies, and with me, as always, is Aaron Richardson. Hi, Linus. How are you? Aaron's doing pretty good. So Aaron is a broker and general manager of Century 21 Heritage Group. Aaron has an extensive background in online marketing, technology, and customer service. And I'm the head of business development at the real estate marketing company, Homania. So myself and Aaron were mulling over the topics for our show this week when Aaron suggested we do a show on listing presentations. And to be honest, I had to look over our past shows because I thought for sure we must have done a show on listing presentations. It's probably one of the most obvious topics to cover when you're doing a real estate podcast. However, of course, turns out we hadn't. So considering last week's show was on buyer presentations, it seemed to just make sense. Last week, I think I called the buyer presentation the yin to the listing presentation's yang. So this week, we're going to be doing the yang with the listing presentation. So the listing presentation. Even if you're a brand spanking new agent, you've likely got one. Listing presentations come in all sorts of colors, flavors, shapes, and sizes. But what makes for a good one? What are the common pitfalls that most agents find themselves in when crafting or giving a listing presentation? I have a funny feeling Aaron might be able to answer some of these questions, so why don't we get right into it? So Aaron, what's the best way to craft a listing presentation? What should your goals be? Okay, so this is a big topic. Loaded um, question. And it is, you know what, yeah. Um, and let's try and break down as easy as possible for people. Um, first of all, if you're new to the, you know, it's whether like Linus was saying, whether you're new to the business or whether or not you've been an existing agent, you probably have something. And if you don't, um, you know, get something together because when you get that phone call to come on over and, you know, we were considering listing our property, um, you're going to need to uh, bring along uh, some material. You're going to need to have something to say. So um, I always find, okay, let's start right from the beginning. If you're going to go with, on a listing presentation, um, I've in the industry, there's two, two steps or one step. Okay. So either you can choose to go and get the listing in the first let's say introduction to the um, into to the seller. So you'll spend some time on the phone with the seller getting as much information as possible so you can compare um, their house to others that have sold and do a, uh, an extensive comparative analysis. Or you can do a two-step which you go and see the house first, get to know them, then come back. And there's advantages and benefits of both. Okay, so the advantage obviously with the um, one step is that you're not going to get let's say cut out, you know, you go, you see the house and all of a sudden somebody else goes in and get, you know, goes on the listing presentation and uh, signs them up and then you never got a chance to come back. Um, strike when the iron's hot, they say. Um, and then the other, um, the other one's a two-step approach, which is actually going and, uh, um, you know, finding out a little bit more about the house and developing the, your presentation and coming back and doing it. And there's, there's lots of advantages to that one. So let's start there. I mean, you know, preparing something based on uh, one step or two, two step. I could keep going. <laughs> I was going to say, so how do we start with the one step then? Okay. Um, with the one step, I mean, I, I went on a, um, uh, went on one of those coaching conversations uh, with um, Rob Vivian. Okay. And every trainer, every coach has a different way of doing listing presentations. And in fact, every agent has a different way. So I'm, anything I bring up today is just, you know, take it for a grain of salt. Um, but he, has done some extensive research and has found in every listing presentation, the seller is going to want to know seven things. And this was something that was been done over the last 50 years and 50 years ago. These questions were the same questions, sellers that were, um, that were asked these questions, like, what are the things you want to know from your agent is the same thing as today. So it's, it's never changed. And those seven questions are, uh, first of all, why, why should they choose you? Okay, so you have to come prepared to talk about information about yourself. Okay, why your company? Uh, you have a brand, and what does your company do for you? Um, what are you going to do to sell their house? So you're gonna have to have a marketing uh, plan for them. Uh, what do you charge is the fifth thing that's most important that people wanna know. Um, and that's surprising, I thought it'd be number one. But uh, uh, what do you charge? Um, so we'll talk about commission. And then uh, what's my home worth? which is really half the presentation in itself because you should be doing a comparable market analysis. Um, and then what's happening in the market. And if you can answer all seven of those questions, um, 
really there should be nothing else that you'll need to discuss. I mean, you, it'll go in different directions, but those are the seven questions you should be answering. And I actually gave a presentation following Rob Vivian doing a seminar once. And one of the interesting things that I took from it too is that he was saying you don't necessarily even want them to ask those questions. You kind of want to lead the conversation and answer the questions as you go through. Is that that's right? a good strategy too? I guess, I guess a lot of this is you want to make sure you've got control of the situation too when you're giving your listing presentation. Absolutely. And anytime you're selling anything to somebody or negotiating anything with somebody, if you're not taking control of the situation, you're not showing the confidence that you have. And uh, confidence is what sells. Um, people will believe what you say if, if you're confident in it. And well, if you're a new agent, how do you get that confidence? Because I imagine yes. that can be a very difficult thing if you're a newer agent to, to yes. go into a, a situation you've never been in before, been in a very few amount of times and like show that confidence. Is it just a matter of getting the practice in and maybe failing yeah. first, the first several times? Yeah, don't be afraid. Uh, you're not going to get everyone. It's impossible. Nobody gets everyone. Everybody has different personalities, different motivations. You're not going to get everyone. And in fact, Rob Vivian is one in four. You'll get one in four listing presentations. And if you're a little better, that's great. And if you're not falling a little bit short, you got to you know, shape up. But if you take the average uh, in the market, it's always one in four. That's what he promotes. So um, go on. If you, if you need to get, you know, your... 10 listings a year in order to make your, your budget, you need to go on 40 listing presentations. And that's the reality of it. So you need to get as many of them as possible and you will get more confident as time goes on. Uh, I had an agent that worked for us actually um, on our team for many years. And when he first started in the business, he was closing deals right away. And I knew right away that he was his confidence. You know, he, he actually just as a person was confident. So he took the material and when he explained it to people, people thought he was in the business for 20 years. Yeah, which I imagine must be another difficult thing if you are a newer agent too. If they do ask you about your experience and you don't have any, how you can kind of answer that, those type of questions too. And that could probably shake your confidence quite a bit if ah. they're starting to question you on your experience. That's a great, great uh, question, Brett. The reality is if you go in there and answer those questions and you're confident, they'll never ask you. They will never ask you how long you've been in the business because you're so confident. Yeah. I guess it goes, just goes, like we said, with controlling the flow of the conversation and being in control of the listing Absolutely. presentation. So uh, should we go back to those kind of prime questions that you mentioned before and maybe kind of go yeah. over those? So, yeah. So why, I mean, you're going to break down your presentation and you're going to do it in different ways. Um, some people are visual, some people are audio, some are audio, some people, you know, learn from listening or um, everybody, some people are statistical people, right? You've talked about the four different personality types that people have, and you're going to need, need to hit all four unless you, um, let's say, say the, the benefit of this two-step approach is a lot of times you're asking questions to determine their personality and come back and tailor your presentation based on those uh, that first initial consultation, but um, the reality is you need to hit those different uh, sort of you know points or personalities. So uh, when you're talking about why should they choose you, um, you know school teachers are typically analytical, so you're going to want to have graphs and numbers and you know prove that you you're you know and if you don't have that about yourself, you can do that about your company. Um, so why should they choose you? And it's very simple. I work really really hard. I'm, I'm the hardest working real estate agent in town. And uh, and you go on to show the confidence that obviously uh, that you have. And it was really neat, actually. Let me see if I can remember how um, Rob Vivian put it. Um, you know, if you've only sold two homes, for example, and uh, um, or let's say four homes, we'll go with four. He did the math um, with a few more. So uh, four homes on the Toronto Real Estate Board, the average sale for a real estate agents two. OK, so if you've done four deals and even if you're sort of you've got a listing that hasn't sold, but you're still doing 40, you're on pace for four deals. Or if you've done one deal in the last two months and there's 12 months of the year, so you're going to get six sales for the rest of the year, you're on pace for six deals. OK, so but let's say four. I'm double the average of the real, Toronto Real Estate Board. So you can use and manipulate numbers, and I hate using the word manipulate, but you can massage the numbers in order to obviously show your confidence and show your ability to sell houses, right? Yeah. So those are some of the things why they choose you. Yeah, and it's unfortunate, but massaging numbers is something that you, you, almost everybody has to do to, to, to get these kind of points across too. I mean, it's, it's, it is very misleading because there are so many agents on the Toronto Real Estate Board for instance, that are part-time or just not very active and such, and just, you know, they sold their brother's home and they're, they're pulling the average down. But, um, I mean, it's good to take advantage of that kind of situation and, and be able to use those numbers your, to your yep. advantage. Yep. Yeah. And then you've got why, why your company. Now, the advantage to being with Century 21 is huge. 
I mean, the Century 21 is a great brand. It's a great brand worldwide, especially with the amount of uh, foreign investors or foreign, um, as they say, immigrants to the company uh, or to the country. Uh, in our area, 57%, uh, I think, of Toronto, let's say, uh, is non-Canadian born or, you know, from different areas. So it's important that we're globally recognized. And uh, that's a big uh, point you can put into. But you've got other things about why your company, why your brokerage, why your brand, you know. So you're going to put that in there. Yeah, for sure. Go ahead. No, you, you can keep going. You're, you're, on, you're on a roll. I don't want to interrupt got, you. So I'll go through the seven fairly quickly, and then we'll just go from there. But uh, what are you going to do? So your marketing plan. Make sure that you have a marketing plan. Um, you should be talking about online technology and really be going into uh, how you're going to help them from a marketing standpoint in, in terms of online. If you don't have an online uh, marketing platform um, or a presentation for them, you better get one because that's where you're selling houses right now. So what are you going to do? It should be a marketing plan. And I even like to timeline it to say, yeah, I'm going to do this, this day, that, this day, the pre-listing, first day on the market, first week on the market. Um, what do you charge is the toughest one and everybody hates dealing with you know the commission thing, but don't let them bring it up. You know, uh, let them know. And there's different ways you can break it down in terms of uh, I've seen graphs that say, listen, you know, you've got two sides of every transaction. You sort of ask them if they understand that. And, you know, you got two and a half on one side and two and a half on the other side. And then it's broken down between the buyer agent, and his brokerage and seller agent, and their brokerage. You break it down further. And if you can show them that you're not taking you know, they think it's 5%. You're not taking the full amount. You're only taking a small portion of that. And also let them know that that small pro portion is the only one really you can negotiate because you don't want to take away from the marketing on the other end. You start talking about it that way and they understand. Um, the biggest thing I use is what's fair. You know, I charge this because I think um, it's fair and I think I'm not the you know, I'm not the most, I'm not the least, I'm the best value. That sort of stuff will really help you with it when it comes down to ne negotiating commission. Yeah, and I guess if you're a full service agent from a full service brokerage too, you can you can elaborate on what you are providing and say there's value to these services. So because you're obviously going to be well, like likely up against you know uh, other agents that might be you know, commission cutting type agents too. They're competing more on price, and you've got to justify your yourself and your in your presence against those kinds types of agents too so i guess having that solid marketing plan and, and showing them that yes okay maybe maybe this guy's charging less but i'm giving you more is very important yeah. Um, I always take a little bit from every trainer that I've ever listened to. Um, Chris Leader is another one that uh, I took his courses. And um, one of the things that I really got from him was one word. And I use it for overcoming any objection that anybody bring, brings up. So it's the word concerned. And uh, and if somebody says, well, so and so will do it for last or whatnot, I say, listen, I'd be really concerned if I were you. <laughs> because And as and soon as they, well, really, you know why? I'd be really concerned because if, you know, that person's going to reduce their commission to three and a half percent, how are they going to go negotiate a deal on your house? They'll be the first ones to want to bring you down in price. So um, I'm here because I'm the, I'm the best value. And I believe that I'm, I'm uh, obviously the best, uh, hardest working agent in town. And of course, all the value propositions that you went over previously is going to really support that uh, commission advantage and i really like to show people that i double the amount of showings on their house by double the amount of advertising i do online etc cetera, etc cetera. so then we get into what's your home worth and that's the uh, i'd say every uh, listing presentation's uh, got two components 50 percent on the presentation and 50 percent on the on the price of the home and uh, unfortunately too many homeowners um will base their decision on well who gives me the best price <laughs> Right? Yeah, that's always the the, the the tough one. And again, uh, I would be concerned if you you know somebody was to come in here and go any higher than that. And if you do go higher, you're eventually going to need to reduce a price, and then you're negotiable by a larger amount, and it brings it down a lot lower than what you normally would have sold for if you had it you know priced right from the beginning. So again, that concerned word always keeps keeps coming up in overcoming those type of object, objections. Yeah, and it almost sounds like a lot of the listing presentation you're you're kind of. Uh, talking about the competition indirectly too. Like, is this a common strategy too to say like, you know, if anyone comes lower than that, I'd be concerned. Everyone has a higher price in this, I'd be concerned. Because um, I guess it's about you, but it's also about making sure that people have more confidence in you and question everyone else. Is there anything else that, that like, I think I've uh, seen seminar presentations where they say, okay, you start planting seeds in their mind being like, hey, you talk about an intermittent marketing strategy, but like it's important for every agent to have one, then maybe they'll ask the next agent down the line, like, okay, so what's your internet marketing strategy? If they don't have one, then it makes them look bad to like the other, the next agent following you. That's right. Is this like, it sounds like it's a good strategy. Is this something that you should be kind of keeping in the back of your mind as you're going through the presentation, not just about you, but about uh, making sure that you, you bring down the other agents a peg? 
Um, yes, you, you can set some people up for failure for sure. I mean, you really can. And if you know who you're against um, and you know what their platform is, you can mention things that, uh, you know, I've got a guy in town, for example, I've seen his listing presentation and uh, I know the one thing if I was going against him, I'd say, listen, um, he's got a whole, he really um, centers on pocket listings and coming soon uh, signage. And uh, uh, again, I'd be very concerned if you go with somebody who is trying to, for example, put the house up early and say I have pocket listings, I'll get my own buyers because what are the chances that are going to be the one that pays the most? You're really selling yourself short and you're put, leaving a lot of money on the table if you don't put it on the open market. Um, so as soon as that agent comes in and says, oh, I do these pocket listings and they're going to go, well, is that really a good idea? And they'll, you know, this is what Aaron was talking about, you know, so are these shady agents. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, and yeah. it doesn't only just bring them down a peg, but they have more confidence in you too, especially if you can put right. the other agents off their game as well. So I hate to use the word sabotage, but I guess that's kind of what you're trying to do to all the other agents in the listing presentation. Well, yeah, you're showing your value proposition. And I do wholeheartedly believe there, there's, I mean, there's some good things and reasons why maybe you'll do a coming soon sign but it shouldn't be about selling it to somebody pre pre-listing you should never pre-sell a home to somebody the definition of market values you have to have it on the market and if you get anything else that hasn't been put on the market you're leaving money on the table most most cases so yeah and that's something we can talk about we may even be able to dedicate a show to coming coming soon so, i would like to actually because it's a very hot topic yeah. right now well, maybe that'll be our next week's episode so yeah, stay, stay tuned for that one Good. Um, so one of the things you, you've kind of talked about, you yep. touched on, uh, is is being flexible. There's different mm -hmm. types of people, obviously. You said there, there's, I think you said four main types of personalities that you kind yes. of are working with. Now, it, I guess it would be important to identify those early and then maybe go a little bit heavier in certain areas and lighter on others and be able to be like adaptable. I know a lot yes. of people, um, not necessarily real estate, just in general, who have presentations they'll have like you know this is their powerpoint presentation they have to do slide one slide two slide three or else it puts them off their rhythm um yeah. but i imagine being flexible is a very strong and powerful thing in the listing presentation to make sure that you do uh, like emphasize those things that you need to and maybe go lighter on the things that you can tell is is maybe something going either going over the head or boring boring your client or prospective client so do you have anything to say about that kind of stuff is this i obviously i'm assuming it's a good strategy but is there any way to maintain your flexibility as you're going through um, yeah, flexibility is huge. And, uh, and when it comes to the salespeople, that's what uh, really, I, I think, uh, I guess, uh, makes one salesperson better than another is the fact that they can flex to the different personality types. Um, you're not going to be able to go in full bore on somebody and take control and all the rest of it with some, you know, nice little old lady that's, you know, um, she looks at the computer screen and then she, you know, and I did this once. I mean, flat out, it was, uh, it was she was in her 80s, um, late 80s, probably. Uh, her family was there. A couple of her members family was there I was doing the presentation and it was on a computer and uh, I shut down the laptop about halfway through and just started talking and I did that because I knew I'd made a mistake I'd, I'd said this and this is not you know you, you can notice the the mannerisms and the body uh, language of the person across from you and uh, yeah those four um, types of personalities there's a whole course on it you know um disc profile is one of them and there's there's a bunch of different ones out there um so dis uh c and there's the different types of personalities and you know i know i'm sort of high d or high d and you know um what are dis so i think i'm high d and i or something like that anyway so but you, it'll tell you what type of personality you are. are you somebody that really um, you know, let's say, for example, you go into a house and a seller of the house is saying, oh, I love the area. My neighbors are this and that. I, I bought this uh, um, piece of furniture at so-and-so store and we've had it in our family for generations. And I just, you know, I'm going to be so sad to leave this area. I mean, that's a very touchy-feely person. So you're going to need to tailor your presentation to uh, exactly that type of person. Listen, I'm going to take the care of your home to make sure when I do the open houses that everybody signs in. And uh, we're going to get a really nice buyer from your home because they're really, you know, it's it's really important that, that they take care of your, you know, family home for 30 years. And that type of person will really like you if you go into that type of conversation with them, right? That's just an example. Yeah, I guess a lot of that comes from just having experience with people and, and being able to adapt and uh, read people too. And, and I imagine that's something that almost in a lot of ways can't be taught very well. A lot of that's kind of like innate uh, in, a, in some people over others. But I mean, I guess with experience over time, you'll you'll be able to recognize you know the types of people a lot easier at, like and more quickly too. Yeah. 
Um, the last, uh, the last thing uh, we went through six. I just want to get in the number seven oh. um, before we forget. I is, lost uh, count. I thought. I thought yeah, no, that's okay. That's okay. What's happening in the market? So okay. that last part, um, you do want to give the market information. That shows you're confident. You no, know, shows you're knowledgeable about the area. Um, you can use market statistics from your real estate board. Um, you, you should have something there where you're going to let them know how much you know increase in the value and what type of people or buyers are out there. And that would be the last thing. So I, I guess doing your homework on the community and such is obviously important as well, right? Absolutely. And, you know, showing that you obviously understand where the buyers are coming from and and tailor your market to that. And, uh, and listen, at the end of the day, they're going to pick the person they, they feel most comfortable with. And think about the conversations a husband and wife would have leaving a listing presentation. Oh, I you know, really like this person. They really seem to, um, you know, I really got along with them. And they say, start saying, well, yeah, but didn't know a lot about the area or this. So think about those conversations and make sure you hit on them. But if you hit on all the seven of those questions, those are the sort of things that they're going to break it down. You can tell them ahead of time, listen, I'm going to answer seven questions for you today. And at the end of these questions, I, you know, I, I, you know, you can obviously ask anything else, but it's always going to revert to seven questions everybody has. And, you know, just show that, you know, that you know exactly what it is it's going to take to to sell their house um yeah all right well um why don't we revert a little bit back to that old grandmother that you were talking about before sure. uh, with, with regards to technology because uh i imagine that listing presentations can vary quite wildly from how much technology is used in the actual listing presentation itself yeah so do, is there a sweet spot is this the kind of thing where you you were you kind of bring all the tools and you gauge your client, your client, or maybe, you know, in advance if it's a two part. Um, but it, how much technology is too much? What's kind of the sweet spot and again? Like, how do you, how do you compensate for that? How do you, how do you know what to do when you go into listing presentation? For that? Usually you ask them, you know, obviously in a listing presentation and they say the 80, 20 rule, get them talking, right? If you get them talking, it's hard because you're going to, you know, have to go through your full listing presentation, tell them all about yourself. But if you think about it that way and, and engage them in it, um, especially if you got grandmother sitting across, you're not going to assume she knows nothing about technology. But however, you know, you can ask some questions, you know, have you ever seen the pictures online of the houses that don't have photos? She goes, oh, yes. Or she says, yeah, I don't go online. You say, okay, well, guess what? I'm going to be able to, um, and, and technology um, you can talk about these days is very, scary and, and but that's where houses are sold so i'm going to i'm going to take care of everything for you and uh, you don't have to worry about anything all your um all the people that come through your house um you know really are going to see everything online and i'm going to make sure that happens because i'm the top in technology you're not going to have to worry about anything to do with technology i'm going to do it for you that sort of stuff i don't know not sure if you noticed this, Aaron, but when you're talking, like doing this kind of like play acting stuff with with the 80 year old grandmother, your your voice gets really like quiet, and soft. Like you're like, <laughs> I'm not sure if you're doing that intentionally or not. But I was like, oh, that's 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 Aaron's old grandmother voice. That's what you. That's that's, what you that's how we talk to her, you know. And, <laughs> I don't know. and 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 that is part of it, right? Mm -hmm. Your body language changes, your your tone changes, your you know. Whereas this, whereas if you're talking to a D type personality, it's they want you in and out, tell you how much it's worth, how much you're going to charge, and then then that's. How you're going to talk you're going to talk fast you're going to be like listen i'm going to be in here this is what here's my list of marketing strategies um have you ever seen anything you know you're going to talk faster have you ever seen the houses online don't have photos well i have the top marketing technology don't worry i'll take care of everything and all the rest so that's sort of how you're going to be speaking to them absolutely yeah. so you've talked about a lot of do's how about the don'ts is there anything that you should avoid in listing presentations i'm sure there's a ton of things but there's probably some <laughs> there big is. ones uh, don't put down the house. Nobody likes it when you're coming in and putting it down. I find that the, let the stager do that. You're bringing a professional to let them know what they need to do to get their house ready. But if you go in there and start saying, and I had a, I had a stager actually do it, which, you know, she needed to improve a little bit on her uh, person. But she'll go through and says, you know, we got to take down old grandma's uh, uh, wallpaper over here. And, and I'm just like, wait a second. And this is actually my parents' house. And I said, like, wait a second. You know, I'm glad my parents aren't here because they would have taken offense <laughs> to that. But yeah. agents, yeah, you've got to be careful not to uh, obviously put down the house. Um, yeah, it's, you know what, uh, what not to do. Jeez. <laughs> um, don't come unprepared. How's that? Don't go to a listing presentation uh, without knowing the area, what has sold in the area. Um, one of the tips I can give you in terms of knowing and showing that you know the area, uh, the house always has just sold down the street. You're always going to have a house that just sold down the street. Make sure they know their last name. So the Johnsons down the street just sold. I don't know if you know the Johnsons, but they've got so-and-so for their house. And if you talk to them like you know who the Johnsons are, 
um, you're showing you know the area and you did your homework. For sure. Yeah. Knowing, doing your homework is always important. Yeah. So I'm telling my son now too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's... Yeah. So what happens if you do get those kind of questions that back you into a corner that you don't have the answer for? Is there a good way to talk around it, especially if it's a question that maybe is one that you're trying to avoid or like, what, what do you do in those kind of situations if, if you get into an awkward back corner? Yeah. It's, it's not, again, it goes to sales. You, you know, you're, if you don't know the answer, um, you could do one thing and say, listen, I will get back to you on that and write it down to show them that, okay, well, they didn't know the answer, but he's going to get back to me. I mean, that, that, that shows that, uh, and make sure you get back to them. Um, that shows that you are diligent and you maybe didn't know the answer, but, uh, uh, the other, Maybe I'll get, you know, I'll write down, but change the subject fairly quickly. Um, you know, maybe point out something different. Um, if somebody comes through a house and they say, wow, this kitchen's small. And I say, but yeah, you notice this backyard. How could you, how could you miss out on, you know, the, the, the tree, the veranda or whatever, you know, you, if you change and, and point them in a different direction, sometimes that, that helps overcome objections. Um, there's different techniques, of course. That's funny. You know what that technique sounds a lot like is like a magician. You need to like okay. show, show the one thing over here and do the other thing over there, right? It's, it's uh, I want to say misdirection, but in this case, it's just leading them in a certain path. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, one of the things when we get a chance I do want to talk about is the materials to bring. You know, the importance of uh, being prepared is one thing, knowing the knowing what you're going to talk about. But what are you going to, are you going to do it on a on a laptop, are you going to, you know, bring a booklet? Uh, are you going to leave them with something? You know, there's all different uh, opportunities there for you. Are you going to bring an iPad? You know, I've even got to the point where I tried uh, tried uh, doing my listing presentation on an iPad and they got to follow along while I grabbed my phone and I was able to control the iPad from my phone on an app that uh, SlideShark was the app. There you go. There's an app for you. Um, and the SlideShark shark app allowed you, again, to control the uh, presentation for them. I, you know, I, I've kind of gone away from that now, but uh, that's there's, there's lots of different uh, ways to bring material and what type of material. My biggest thing is just to make sure that material is top notch. And um, new agents are going to print off things on, on, on just a regular paper, you know, because they haven't really develop something yet but when you get your get a chance my biggest suggestion is you're in charge of your own business nobody's going to and and our company does they they hand you a listing presentation you can manipulate it, but nobody's going to do these things for you um, go out there and get a printer get a marketing person within your company or outside your company to develop something just really really top notch and uh, if you if you're if you got that type of presentation you're already ahead of the game yeah, well, appearances are always important, and and that's what a lot of it is. It's like having that that shiny show thing to like make sure that they know that you've got that extra level of professionalism and everything too. Because yeah. yeah, I imagine if you if you came with something that like didn't look very good, if you, if you had some sort of handout that just didn't even aesthetically look pleased, maybe all the information is there. It can make you look less professional, and it could I guess bring you down in their eyes as well. So it's always important. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so but in, in, in the end, professional, courteous, make sure that they like you because, you know, your personality needs to match theirs. And uh, and you're only going to get one in every four. So, you know, you need to get as many as possible. Every presentation is different. Before you go on your listing presentation, make something um, or go back into your listing presentation and make sure that it really revolves around that listing. So it's going to always be changing, always be trying new things, right? Yeah. I guess a lot of it, like we've talked about throughout all this, is just experience too, and just get, getting to learn th throughout uh, doing these over and over again. Um, yeah. So it, I think we talked about this a few episodes ago, but is, is it a bad idea if, if, say, you're a new agent to tag along on a listing presentation with someone? Is that great idea? Good? Yeah, great idea. It's tough. It's tough for to find uh, somebody will allow you to do that. Um, you know, uh, obviously joining a team is going to be easier because you can tag along with your team leader. Um, but if you don't, you're not on a team, then, uh, yeah, if you can, you can network amongst your agents within your company and find somebody to let you do that would be fantastic. Obviously get some, experience. is there a benefit to the agent that's like, I guess the more experienced agent in that situation too, bringing along like a, like a kind of like an agent in training almost to like work on their listing presentation. Is there an advantage to being the like the um i want to say superior but more experienced agent in that situation like maybe you'll give yeah. your client the perception that you're so good you're you know you're training the new blood coming in 
Yeah, I think a lot of agents uh, are looking for help, especially the busy ones. And they're looking for people to, you know, let's say they're going away on vacation, they're going to look after their business or somebody else to do an open house or, you know, maybe even some of the paperwork and stuff like that just to uh, to get that done. Um, I think a lot of agents are looking for that help. So uh, that's where you have the opportunity if you're a new agent to um, sell them on yourself and uh, and see how that relationship goes. All right. So is there any other resources that you, you want to bring up for listing presentations before you conclude the segment? Gosh, there's just so much out there. Um, try to take a little bit from every one of the trainers that let's say, you know, if you take any of the courses, the trainers, the coaches, you know, try and take a little bit and see what works with for you. Um, but practice makes perfect. So uh, even grab somebody in the office and do uh, some role playing, you know, do a listing presentation with another agent. If you're both new or somebody wants, to, you know, maybe has the time to spend with you to, to do some role playing, your manager or whatnot, it's a good idea to do that as well. Right. So just segmenting into the app of the week is kind of transitions in pretty smoothly. Um, you did mention that, you know, sometimes you, you brought tablets, you tried different technology and such. Well, our app of the week this week um, that we want to talk about is actually the Google suite of like office, like online office yeah. stuff. So there's Google Drive, which is kind of like the main bit of it, but then there's also their subsidiaries of that, like Google Docs, Google Slides, and Google Sheets. For those of you that are kind of in the Microsoft Office realm, that'd be the same as Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and uh, PowerPoint. But the nice thing about the way that Google has it done, they've had these these out for maybe about a decade now, is you can use these for free online. It's like having Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, or Microsoft PowerPoint online available on any computer. You don't have to install anything, you have to pay for anything. And whenever you make edits, you can collaborate with other people. They can make edits, they can send your, your listing presentation for, to someone for review. You don't actually have to send a file around, you send them a link and they can actually edit everything online. The other great thing is too, if you have if you're, if you're doing it on your desktop or your laptop and you want to give your presentation on your iPad, you can have the Google Slides app open, which is the, the PowerPoint version of uh, the Google side of things. And you can just load it up on your iPad. You don't have to worry about you know, trying to figure out how to get that, that Microsoft Office file from your, your laptop to your iPad. So it's, it's very seamless. It's a very good way of doing it. Um, Google gives something like five gigabytes of free storage, I think, uh, maybe even more than that for these kinds of things. And it might, it's a really good platform to, to have your listing presentations and a lot of your documents in general on too. I know Aaron has used this for quite a while. I've used it professionally as well. And it's it's so ingrained in my in, in what I do from day to day. I don't even have Microsoft Office uh, installed on my computer anymore. So Aaron, have you been using this, I guess? like I've been Oh saying- yeah. Yeah, with Google Docs, I think the Excel spreadsheet, uh, especially, I always call it just Google Docs. I don't know if, you know. Yeah, I think it used to be just called Google Docs, but they, they've separated it off. And very Google yeah. way, they like they bring everything together into Google Drive and they separate everything again. So Google Docs, Google Slides, and Google Sheets are the three kind of big okay, ones. So- I guess I've used Google Sheets before, <laughs> and uh, and it's really good because the Excel spreadsheets. If you're if you've got something that you're collaborating with a team member or somebody you work with, and and you both need to work on that document, it's uh, it's it's really neat because uh, you you could be on there and uh, you've you know let's say updated uh, one of the figures with, with something that's going on, and uh, and all of a sudden you notice a, a number change because the other person on the other side is also doing the update. So it's it's almost like we're live or real time. That's pretty neat. Yeah, and, and it is seamless. It's not like someone's like working on your work and kind of messing up what you're doing you can actually see which like cell they're editing and it'll say like you know Aaron Richardson and it'll have a little highlight around what 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 he's doing like as you're in there and it's actually a pretty useful real-time collaboration tool for sure as well as just having this online resource for all your presentation slides uh excel so your spreadsheets and documents as well so yeah all right well try out google docs we'll put all the links and everything in the show notes so that will conclude our show for today. So if you like the show, subscribe to our show on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, wherever you happen to find podcasts online. And please don't forget to leave us a five-star review on those sites because it really does help. You can watch this and past shows at spotlight.century21.ca slash podcast. If you need to reach us, you can email us anytime at podcast at homania.com. That's podcast at H-O-M as in Mary. E-A-N as in Nancy, I-A dot com. So this podcast was brought to you by the Spotlight Marketing Program, an exclusive marketing package available only to Century 21 agents in Canada. Spotlight provides agents with a comprehensive internet marketing strategy for their listings. We provide high-quality HDR photography, stunning HD video tours, cutting-edge responsive website, and extensive advertising system that will help sell your listings faster, sell them for more money, impress your clients, and generate leads. 
So find out why so many top agents are using Spotlight by visiting spotlight.century21.ca today. Just a little side note too, actually as part of the Spotlight program, we do provide listing presentation slides and statistics that you can slot into your existing listing presentation, which I probably should have been mentioning throughout the podcast, but it's okay, I'll just mention it at the end here. So anyhow, thanks everybody for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you next week.